Hey guys! Today we are going to review Solvo S307. It is fresh release and new generation budget 3D printer. I pre-ordered this unit with $299. Solvo state that it could print a bench under 30 minutes. Is that real? We're gonna find out today. After two recent linear rod motion system printers were released, Sobo decided to go back to classic formula of T-slot and wheel motion system. A little difference this time, this bat slinger comes with a clipper firmware and capable of printing 250mm per second for the most model and return a still good printing quality. For simple shape and models, you can even further increase the printing speed and accelerations. Beside fast printing, Solvo SV07 also comes with direct dry extruder with a full metal hot end that can reach 300 Celsius degrees. This extruder design is carried over from SV06 and SV06 Plus. You can call it the third generation of this design. It is a lot better compared to when it first came out. Under this blue case, there is a set of LED lights that illuminate the nozzle area. However, this extruder is still come with the non-standard size volcano nozzle. Behind this gantry, there is a gantry cooling fan that provides extra cooling for high-speed printing. It is loud, but it works really well for at the same time. SV07 comes with a clipper screen with a 64-bit 4-core 1.5 GHz processor. The screen is around 5 inch with a high resolution and responds quickly. However, there are too many interfaces load at the same page. It might take a while for you to get used to the small text and get familiar with the features layout. After you gain some muscle memory, it works really well. Also, Sobo finally provide a USB drive instead of micro SD card. You can also connect the Wi-Fi and use your PC to operate the printer wirelessly. The main board is still STM32 with a 350 watt mean well power supply. The electricity consumption on idle, heating, and printing The noise level at idle and printing Now there is a big difference between gantry fan on and off. The most parts of this printer are pre-assembled. It should only take around 10 to 15 minutes to assemble. We are going to have a separate tutorial video focusing on assemble and some of the common issues of this printer later. We are going to first test the bench G code file that on a USB drive. There are two different bench files, one is 25 minute and another one is 35 minute. I first test it with a white sample PLA. The 25 minute one looks really nice. And next, 35 minutes one was test too. Lastly, I slide my own G code on the Pulsar slicer. I didn't put too crazy speed and acceleration on it. This bench turned out 46 minute printing time. I continued to test the same file with a different PLA filament. The results were all close one to another. To say all oh, these benches looks really nice overall. I also test the ringing test on the USB drive. The result looks good to me. 
so I didn't redo the input shape and calibration. Next, I test with those basic test models as usual. This calibration cube turned out really nice. All the layers finish looking clean. But the top surface is a bit ugly. Let's put a 45 degrees angle under a strong light source. I further increased the acceleration to 5000 mm per second. It cut down 2 minute printing time, which is not a lot, but if, if you do the math, it is around 20% printing time. Print still looks awesome. All two cubes dimension are accurate, beside the Z axis. Overhand spring was test. It may not be able to reach 250 mm per second for such small parameter model, but it is still fast speed for this test. As you can see, the result turned out fantastic. The gantry fan does provide a huge amount of airflow to cooling the part. Next, I was use this little dragon to test the detail finish of the printer. Let's check it out. All small parameter detail finishing all look very nice. The layer is smooth and the detail looks clean. The only issue is the overhand on the ear or on the top, whichever you like. A moderate hardness model with a lot of overhand was test. Compare printing time with Ender 3. We can now see it turned out good. Beside the cooling issue in the front, it is interesting that when the flow from the back was blocked, the part cooling fan from the extruder is not that great. One more complex model was test. This time, there is a lot of support needed for this model, but I did not reduce the printing speed. Let's take a look. We can see there are a lot of unsmooth finish on, on the back. Let's remove all the support. The model looks nice overall. We can find a lot of unsmooth layer and some small cooling issues. I was testing silk filament with this of my own design. Somehow, the filament runout sensor encountered an issue. The filament was still intact, but the light on the filament sensor went off and pause the printer. I just manually continue the print on the touch screen. The print still finished, however, there is a big amount of missing layers. Also, the layer finish is not smooth again. But you should probably print silk film at a slower speed. Next, I switched to PETG film. It required higher temperature and did not like too much cooling during printing. The bench turned out good. There is some layer defect and stringing due to the cooling fan. This model was printed with same filament. This rose turned out amazing. I could barely see the layer line, it's just ultra smooth. I switched to TPU filament last. This print looks very good. All the layers bond together really nicely. A Kali Jacken was tested with the TPU. Unfortunately, 
the PEI coating on the printer bed was removed with the print. But the printer is not perfect beside a bit of stringing. I was wondering how well this printer could handle high temperature filament with a higher speed. So I test the ABS. I bring the printer to the yard and test with this model. I also manually turn the gantry fan off from the screen. The extra cooling may cause a layer adhesion issue. The print does finish with no issue. The part did not look good due to the major cooling issue, as you can see. I continue to one model that has less small parameter and less overhead. This model looks good overall. All layers stick together fine and look smooth with a few spots. Carbon fiber blend filament was tested. The prints went off the printer bed after a while. I restarted the print and applied some glue stick on the printer bed. This time, it turned out okay. There is a lot of debris on the part. The overall finish looks alright. For a functional part, it will work. You can see there is more PEI coating peeling off. Final thought of SV07. I have to say I was impressed by the speed and the print quality of this printer. Even the i3 structure has a natural disadvantage of the weight to cause hard to speeding and saturation up. Print speed is valuable for a printer, but it does not represent everything. Print quality, consistency, and reliability are more important in my opinion. During the test, we will go through different filaments and model to find out the potential of this printer right out of the box. It does not mean that that's a limit of this printer. It is more like the limit of what I can do at this point. It has not reached its full potential yet. Now, back to the printer itself. First, it can achieve a good level of printing speed and still maintain a good printing quality. The 25 minute bench are real. And some of my test print across the entire video has proved that. It could even print ABS and TPU at a fast speed. Second, the price for this printer is good. You got Clipper touchscreen on board with a Wi-Fi feature, two-side PEI build plate, 300 Celsius high temperature hot end, auto bed leveling, dual Z axis, silent step driver, and 32 bit mainboard, and more. Third, the gantry cooling fan significantly improved the cooling for the fast speed printing. It makes a lot of noise when you start operation, but when you are printing without this frame, the print is quiet. Fourth, the clipper screen is work nicely. There is no delay or lagging when you are using it. The Wi-Fi feature is so easy to connect and easy to use. It makes life easier without flip G code around the PC and the printer. Fifth, the third gen solo direct drag shooter works great this time. The float rate is good and it can handle most of the filament even a high temperature one. There is an even LED light to help you check out the first layer. Six, the two side PEI build plate works well for the most filament. I only have some issue with the carbon fiber blend, but after apply some glue stick on the build plate, it stick too well. Seven, the USB drive is a lot nicer to compare to micro SD card. However, this printer lacks attention to detail at this point. For my pre-order and early production unit, I made a list of issues that I have encountered and sent back to Sobo. Hopefully they'll fix most or all of them on a later patch. Here is some of the issues. First, there is a random noise appear on my printer. 
The gantry cooling fan makes huge noise all the way to 70 decibel. And if you are putting it somewhere near you, it will hurt you. I also found that cooling fan has a resume during the idle. It bought a heck out of me. The anti bad luck part made grinding noise during a Z exit travel. I can hear it when I home in the printer. Second, there is a design error on the YX spell tension. If you are putting it all the way to the hot stop, the edge of injection molding power will catch on the heater bed plate. If you have forgot to push back and directly start reprinting, you will have an issue. Don't ask me how I find it out. However, this is only happen when you manually put it all the way to the front. The printer itself will not put YX all the way to this point. Third, the manual instruction is not complete. At least that's what I have received. There are missing information on bed leveling and how to do input shaping calibration. Fourth, my POM wheel is sliding up and down. It is something rare to see. I tend to believe I receive a bad part, but it has not affected the printing quality so far. Also, if you are printing at a very high speed regularly, the POM wheel will be wear out very fast. Fifth, the clipper screen is a little bit too small. The text font is too small too. It might take a couple of days for you to get the menu layout and gain some muscle memory. Also, the Z offset value on the bed leveling step does not show a negative sign. So don't be surprised when you put a negative 1.3 and shows 1.3. It will work, but just won't display the negative sign. Six. The PEI coating is not adhesive while on the build plate. I managed to peel off when I removed the TPU part. It was my fault not bending the build plate and wait for the part to cool down before I removing it. But just something you will want to pay attention to. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, the nozzle is volcano-like nozzle. It is longer than the standard volcano nozzle. So you can only get it from solo side or swap the volcano nozzle to a standard volcano nozzle and upgrade the cooling fan. But I personally think some of the issues or most of the issues will get fixed and improved over time. I won't consider it as a deal breaker beside the gantry fan noise. Overall, SV07 is a solid offer from Sovo on the entry level 3D printer. Nothing is particularly new at this printer, but it works well. It does well on fast speed printing compared to traditional i3 best slinger and the hardware value are amazing for this price. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Do not use a printer any way other than described here in order to avoid personal injury or property damage.